I was eight years old in 1972, when the hopes and dreams of a nation hung on a single goal mouth scramble at the south end of a dark rink in Moscow. The Canada-Russia series showed us a hockey nation as devout as ours. So 33 years later, I went where Team Canada had gone before me. I decided to discover Russian hockey for myself. I wanted to live the Russian game, to wander from the statues in front of Red Square to the smoky rinks of East Siberia in search of the soul of the game and the heart of its people. Red Square, Gorky Park, and the Kremlin were all places I'd learned about in 1972, but Luzhniki Arena, Russia's most famous hockey rink, was where I wanted to go first. I found two of the country's most storied teams, Moscow Dynamo versus the Red Army, the KGB versus the soldiers, renewing their rivalry in the old rink. But in 2005, all that was left of the Moscow hockey wars were rows of empty seats and a scattering of old combatants, among them the great Alexander Yakushev, who led all Russians in goal scoring in 1972. I have to say that, of course, when the Soviet Union the Soviet Union, we made a lot of mistakes in our own life в социальной жизни, поэтому не только поломали какие-то структуры политического плана, но мы поломали, в общем-то, и структуры в спортивном движении. While Alexander Yakushev was sought after by the Montreal Canadiens but refused leave to the NHL, Alexander Ovechkin's future is the NHL. Whereas the Big Yak played for iron-fisted coaches and was considered an equal among teams of 20 men, Alexander Ovechkin is all about individual athletic expression and a dream of earning millions playing for the NHL's Washington Capitals. Такие традиции, такие игроки были Крутов, Ларионов, Харламов, Мальцев. И как бы хочется на них быть похожим, но всегда как бы хочется быть похожим на самого себя. The new generation of Muscovite can be found not only in the rinks, but also in the streets. Moscow is a city in transition and in many ways in conflict. Teenage summers here are no different than anywhere else except the guitar playing and beer drinking is done not a hundred feet from the Kremlin wall. The following day, however, 
Aging communists replace the kids, and instead of heavy metal, a soundtrack of old party songs fill the air. Russia is a country of two brothers, the younger one surging into capitalism's great unknown, while the elder looks back fondly at the security and comfort of the past. Both Alexander Yakashev and his wife, Tatyana, were the toast of the town in the 1970s. While he patrolled left wing for the Soviet national team, she led the starry life of an aspiring dancer in the Brezhnev era. Though long faded from their status in Moscow's social circles, they still carry themselves like sporting royalty, a king and queen from another era. Well, Bennett. Bennett. <laughs> Bennett. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you saw him play hockey? And did he impress you? В основном в этом человеке именно чисто, вот понимаете, это какой-то необыкновенный нос, стройность, рост, все. Это был вот щелчок. Мне было интересно, а что дальше? А что? Как он говорит? Звук его голоса. Do you ever have to protect him from uh, from crazy women? Because we talked to uh, three or four hockey fans outside the rink yesterday, and we asked them who the most handsome hockey player was, and three of them said Alexander. Это подтверждение, что меня неплохой вкус. So you never have to be like a hockey player. You never have to use your elbows to keep the women away from Alexander. Я не подавал повода. Now, do you want to go shopping? С удовольствием. С удовольствием. Потому что всегда что-то есть новое. Посмотреть. I think that's a yes. I'm the lonely Canadian changing in the dressing room. Though one of the goals of my visit was to play with the veterans of the 1972 series, I found another team of veterans to play with, ex-soldiers who fought against Afghanistan in the 1980s. I'm a little worried about the caliber of play because in Russia they don't, they don't have a house league. So most of the people who play hockey at an older, at advanced age have committed part of their lives to learning and studying and actually really being good at the game. So there's sort of an alarming lack of uh, fat or old guys here with crummy equipment. So I'm sort of fearing the worst thing. But we'll see. Among all the skaters, Misha was the team's ringleader. <laughs> Misha went to war in Afghanistan after 20 of his friends had gone off and done the same thing. By the end of the war, however, only Misha returned. His freedom was short-lived when he and a friend were arrested for brutally assaulting four Moscow policemen and sentenced to five years in jail. But Misha survived prison and returned to become a hero among his friends. Prison and returned to become a hero among his friends. Любовь спасет мир. Когда были красные времена, когда был коммунизм, я тебе хочу сказать, что мы тоже жили ништяк. У нас 
Вообще было все хорошо. У нас, на... да, у, нас, у нас народ был весь сытый. Сейчас демократия пришла, стали очень богатые, очень бедные. Шиш. Вот так-то. Вот за это и обидно, что вроде бы кровь проливали там в красные времена, а денег-то не дают. Жить-то не дают. Вот что, до сих пор. Да. Делается это вот так примерно. Вот. There you go. Да не, куда он вырежет-то? Ну такая шал, шалушка такая. Птичка. Да какая, ну такая, не такая. И вот так вот, смотри. There you go. Вот, раз. вот и все, косяк готов. Косяк горит, и у тебя глаза горят. Все это только о нашей благодаря. Did you learn this in the army? Did you learn how to do that in the army to roll the joint? Да, в армии ты конечно. А где еще? В армии у нас все научат. Не хочешь? Не можешь? Научим. Не хочешь? Заставим. We came to Russia expecting you to skate with the Central Red Army and play with the giants of Russian hockey and stay wearing this smelly dress and getting stoned with a bunch of Russian hosers. It's perfect. When the West thinks of Siberia, we usually think of the worst. Endless gulags, the buckling cold, and wastelands of snow and ice. The last thing I expected of Omsk was a city painted in gold light, with beautiful women promenading down city streets. nor would I have guessed at its reputation as the intense new hotbed of Russian hockey. In Soviet times, promising young players were plucked from the provinces and sent to Moscow to play. But these days, players like the top 12-year-old in the country, Jenny Kuznetsov, has a choice about where he plays. Having been recruited along with his mom and dad from the bleak, faraway industrial town of Chelabinsk, Jenya dreams of one day earning top dollar with a pro team. Это я не хвастаюсь, как мама, это статистика, факты. Гол плюс пас. Дженя, who wears number 15, is given a chance to show everyone why Omsk has brought him in from such a distance to play for their team, the Avant-Garde. Все готовы? Да. Despite Jenya's promise as a young player, there were other reasons why the Kuznetsovs came to Omsk. Мне тяжело, конечно, об этом говорить. В том году у нас произошла трагедия в семье. В ночь, значит, с 1 на 2 мая во время демонстрации у нас погиб старший сын. Просто это была как ночная вечеринка по городу. Это произошел, в принципе, несчастный случай. Непреднамеренная, как бы. Ну, как сейчас молодежь отмечает праздники? Буйно же. Потому что очень тяжело после гибели сына жить даже элементарно в той же квартире с той же мебелью и в том же дворе и с теми же соседями. А здесь мы начали просто, у нас есть еще второй сын, 
И ради этого стоит жить. И мы... Даже эта причина была нас подтолкнула уехать сюда. После похорон старшего сына Женя мне как-то сказал, что я буду большим, если я буду там хорошо играть, у меня будут деньги, я обязательно проведу турнир в память погибшего брата. Is there ever a little bit of fear and uncertainty uh, lurking at the back of your mind when you think about the future and what it might hold? В душе есть немножко, конечно. Though the avant-garde finish in second place, Genya has a brilliant tournament and is named the MVP. What's, what's the role of the hockey mom in Siberian hockey? What's your job? What do you guys do? Wherever there's a hockey scene, there are hockey moms. One afternoon, I got together with Ala, Luda, and Olga for some Siberian hockey talk. How do you feel about the avant-garde junior teams bringing in uh, a player like Jania, for instance, somebody like that, an elite player that is recruited to play for the team? Не хуже, чем наши, а уровнем выше, а значит и у наших появляется возможность за ними тянуться. Это очень важно, это здорово. Если кто-то даже ушел с команды, стараться вернуться туда, то есть показать такой результат, чтобы он должен должен быть выше этот результат того. Мы верим в свои дети. A few weeks later, Genya faces his next challenge, a road game against his former team. Как немножко волнуешься, что будешь играть против своей команды? Ну да, немного волнуюсь. Ну так, в основном, всегда перед играми, когда волнуюсь, так вот. Не хватает Ой, как не хватает. Не хватает, не бывает, а постоянно не хватает. Вот и мне Алла, да, вот этого звонит частенько, и я прям ей говорю, хочу к вам. Челябинска. Старший сын погиб, мне очень не хватает сходить вот даже на кладбище, в церковь здесь вот часто хожу, ставлю свечку. И... As the train approaches Chelabinsk, Genya is anxious over the prospect of playing against the team he abandoned for the Omsk avant-garde. For the first time, Genya appears to wear the full weight of his promise as a young athlete. Сейчас Саша у нас на лесах, у нас видит. Мы его помним, любим. Он Женечке помогает. Я всегда прошу у него, помоги Женечке, он помогает. Не 
Ну, гуёб. The ice should be the place where Genya is freed from the politics of his visit and the pressure of his peers and family. But as anyone who's ever played hockey knows, sometimes the game lets you down. Женя, конечно, очень волнуется. Игра у него не получается. Ему нужно, конечно, гол забить. Тогда он почувствует себя уверенным. Все-таки на своем льду против своей команды очень тяжело ему. For the first time all year, the young star is kept off the score sheet. It's through the snow and deep cold where you find the famous Russian spirit. This is especially true in Moscow, where life is ebullient despite the cloak of a heavy, unrelenting winter. The streets are packed and restaurants, shops and galleries burst with bodies. Summer in Russia was a sunny revelation, but it wasn't until I arrived through the fog and sleet that I felt like I was walking through the real Russia. While Alexander Yakushev is the face of Soviet hockey, the aging, aching veteran of 72, Yuri Blinov, is its soul. Yuri and his wife Tatyana have tried to embrace the new Russia, despite living a common life after years of privilege with the national team. Так что мне в этом плане очень хорошо было. У меня голова не болела, чем накормить мужа, чтобы он сыграл лучше. Yuri and Tatiana keep a modest apartment in the Moscow suburbs with their adopted grandson. Today we visited them. Yuri was packing for a trip with the 72 old timers to Barnaul, where he'll earn $200 for three days travel. Yuri, is there any resentment? or jealousy among the older players that young Russian athletes can come compete in the NHL and make millions of dollars? It's that some more, some less, получают. I don't have any jealousy. I have a very good family. Thank you. 
Моя бач. Приезжайте к нам, пожалуйста, еще. Okay. Всего вам доброго. До свидания. До свидания. Окей. Okay. До свидания. Окей. Okay. subway station I've ever been in my life. I guess it was part of the big proletariat dream to make the first public place that people see before they go to work are these grand underground cathedrals that are essentially subway stations. Unbelievable. Despite the changing nature of Russian life, watching Alexander Yakushev skate in this old central Red Army rink, it could be any era in Russian history, guided by any number of political ideologies. It's as if time stops when the puck is on the yak's stick and he's cruising down the wing feeding some bucket-headed winger from Canada. While well, the hockey rink is Alexander's sanctuary, the theater is Tatiana's. I got together with her in the Mali Theater, once the home away from home for Tsar Nicholas II and Vladimir Lenin. Это театр важен и для нас, и для каждого москвича, и вообще для россиянина. Это знаковое место Москвы и всей России. Недаром вы, наверное, обратили внимание большой напротив малый. While Alexander and Tatiana are as close to hockey royalty as it gets in Moscow, they've suffered their share of pain in the new Russia. In 1992, a time of new freedom and utter lawlessness throughout the country, their daughter Katya was abducted while the Yakushevs were away in Switzerland. Her body was found a year later in the Moscow River. You know, it's not just like that. A person was sick, и умер. А это здоровая девушка, последний курс института, написанный диплом, и ушла и не вернулась, как вы читаете, понимаете? Считается 21 год, один месяц и 9 дней. Видите как? Но не пришлось. Жаль. Tatiana, a lot of old people have been victimized uh, by change in Russia, from the old Russia to the new Russia. A lot of young people have been victimized as well. Um, do you think, in general, that we live in more violent times in the new Russia? You know what I'm saying? Times don't choose. They live in them. You know, you have to live and understand the reality. This is life. И она не должна быть такой легкой, легкомысленной. Здесь все, она многогранна. Mm. Ну и что бы я ни сказала, конечно, с моей стороны, я все делала ради этого любимого мужчины, ради Александра. Понимаете? Mm. Ради Александра. out of Moscow by night. We're going to catch his overnight trains. Beautiful night, a little bit of snow, about minus eight degrees below zero. And uh, we're going to head into the country, into the heart of Russian hockey. We're going to go to Kazan in Tartarstan. Let's go.
A thousand years ago, Genghis Khan came to Kazan and stopped. Having conquered half of Europe, he looked around and thought, hey, it's kind of nice here. I think I'll stop marauding for a while. Genghis and his nomadic Mongol army, the Golden Horde, eventually settled in Kazan and their descendants became known as Tatars and the region Tatarstan, which is unique in Russia for being largely Muslim and hockey mad. It was from this frozen seat of power to the east that the Tatars ran Russia, at least until Ivan the Terrible burned it to the ground. Still, it seemed like as good a hockey town as any. As you can see, at hockey rinks in Kazan, tea is the beer of the rink. Everybody drinks tea all the time. And this is our little pregame ritual. So, uh, uh, Kobolchuk chai, uh, Lakawe chai, Habibulin chai. Bidini chai. Mullah Shamil is one of the biggest hockey fans in town. On game day, which in this case will see Dinamo and Alexander Ovechkin visiting Kazan, he calls the faithful to prayer from his modest wooden mosque. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Shamil, what, what, what do you think makes hockey a great game? Kazan's Super League team, the Akbars, signal the changing times in Russian hockey. Owned by the local oil company, Akbars have done what the Moscow teams could not, luring an embarrassment of NHL lockout stars to their team, Brad Richards, Vincent LeCavalier, and Ilya Kovalchuk among them. One of the first lockout stars recruited by Akbars was the colorful Lithuanian-born defenseman Darius Kasparaitis. What would you say would, would have been the hardest uh, part of growing up in the Soviet Union as, as a teenager? Oh, I think, uh, you know, the hunger, I think, uh, because I, I, I left my home when I was 14 from between, I had no, uh, and I lived without parents. And I remember we used to get only uh, the one ticket, this like, ticket was priced, how much money you can spend for food. And I remember being a kid and uh, being hungry all the time, especially at evenings, you know, and try to find food somehow. What are some of the greatest changes in, in Russia that you've seen firsthand uh, since you've been here last? I think all the changes are better, you know. Uh, the only one thing you miss is closeness of the people during Soviet era, you know, when you had uh, people living in an apartment building and everybody knew their name and everybody celebrated the same uh, holiday, everybody said hi, everybody left their kids with a neighbor and uh, stuff like that. And nobody kind of count the money, how much, what, what people make, you know, everybody kind of share the same things. If you have no salt, you go knock at the neighbor's door, or if you need a potato, you go knock at the neighbor's door and ask for that. Right. I think that's what people miss, miss the most from the Soviet era. Right. Kazan's star system hasn't come without a price. In the same complex where the Super League team plays, the junior Akbar's toil next door in relative obscurity. Because of the ownership's star habit, many of Kazan's best young homegrown players will be hard pressed to find a place with the big team. Do you think there's a future with the first, the premier team for your sons? Мы на это надеемся, что есть, что все-таки наши ребята в лидерах, они забивают каждый матч по шайбе обязательно. Мы надеемся только на лучшее, что они будут когда-то играть у нас за первую команду.
Надежда умирает последней, говорят. Надеемся. Do you support uh, bringing in all the North American stars to play for Akbars? Не совсем. Одобряем, поскольку все-таки хочется, чтобы казанские ребята играли именно за казанскую команду. И вот тогда уже победа была бы настоящей. No, for sure. How's it going? Very well. Actually, since you just got here, I thought I'd give you a little present that I could. <laughs> oh, totally. You know what? I could use one of these too. Like, fit. Oh yeah, see, uh, that's perfect. I think that works. That'll do. I keep the tag on. That's yeah. Like, I think Before Vinny Le Cavalier, Brad Richards, and Darius Kasparitis, there was Fred Brathwaite from Ottawa, Ontario. From what I've been hearing, the Russian league is probably the second best league in the world. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, coming over here and getting a chance to play on a regular basis and uh, playing with the best players right. and trying to get myself back into the NHL. But it's funny because you mentioned about, you know, uh, not being able to like order pizza and stuff. Like, are there certain things you do to kind of fight that, that solitude? A lot of things is just over the phone. I mean, I, I'm on right. the phone quite a bit. My bill's probably about a thousand, probably even a little right. bit more a month just... Uh, because it is, you get a little lonely being yeah. over here. There's not, uh, I mean, we just got two new guys, LeCavier and Richards, which I'll probably be hanging out with quite hang. a bit. Right. But uh, before that, um, I really wasn't doing too much. I'd just come home, watch my Hallmark channel, <laughs> or uh, see And cry. And cry. And just, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's unbelievable the things you end up watching. Or uh, see And cry. And cry. And just, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's unbelievable the things you end up watching. And, <laughs> Right. When, when you don't have uh, much to go by. Or, yeah. Two o'clock, I get the Flintstones. I mean... Thank God for pornography. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about that either. No, I never do it. From Darius Kasparitis to Fred Brathwaite to the Mula Shamil, the hockey scene in Kazan is a scene of outsiders. It was hard to get a sense of the true passion of Kazan hockey until we came upon an industrial park on the fringe of the city. There, in the middle of a pile of bricks and rubble, slouched a half-finished rink, the handiwork of a truck driver named Bernat, whose vision of the rink, the only public ice pad in all of Tatarstan, came to him in a dream. He spends every ruble he earns assembling the Olympic-sized rink in hope that it will provide a solace for the thousands of kids who skate in the tiny courtyards of the city. Главное чтобы дети могли заниматься. Это была моя мечта. Ну, как вам объяснить? Вот, скажем, хоккеист или любой спортсмен, он бывает порядочным, хорошим человеком. Понимаете, из него не будет преступника. Поймите правильно. И в этой ситуации я на это внимание не обращаю. What do you think of the big team, Akbars, spending millions of dollars bringing imported stars to play for the home team when you're spending every dollar you earn to buy bricks, to build this rink brick by brick, board by board. What, what would you say to the owners of the big league team? And for such money, let's say, any pay for a hockey player, it's no secret to anyone. Everyone knows how much it is. 
Один там, скажем, Хабибулин, 6 миллионов, там другой 3-4 миллиона. Но это не стоит таких денег, чтобы в такой бедной стране, как наша, как говорится, и, и вдруг находить такие деньги, когда врачи, учителя не получают зарплату. Это обидно. Добрый вечер, уважаемые радиослушатели. Я извиняюсь, что я влезаю. Неожиданно совершенно получилось. Сегодня у нас в гостях человек, который уже разорвал множество женских сердец в Казани, который наломал уже немало клюшек об голову соперников. Сегодня у нас в гостях, здесь звучат всеобщие аплодисменты, Дариус Каспаратис у нас в гостях. Здравствуй, Дариус. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Два вопроса у меня по вчерашней игре. Кричат ли в Канаде вот, в спорные моменты о каких-то сексуальных предпочтениях судей? Вот. Нет, такого не бывает. Ну а что они кричат тогда в Канаде? То есть вот у нас кричат, что э, судья живет с мужчиной у нас вот вчера. Это, это да, было это, это очень было интересно, потому что я не знал, что есть судья другого расположения и другого секс-ориентации в России. А в Америке или в Канаде они просто свистят или говорят бу. Бу, просто бу. Кем занято сейчас твое сердце? У меня есть своя любимая женщина, которая сейчас находится в Америке, потому что... Не, в Америке это понятно, это все понятно. Это все понятно. Вот, то есть ты верит, вот ей, она и все, и, вот, и других вариантов да, никаких. Да, я живу по, по западным а, а, обычаям, я не изменяю своей жене, потому что... И не живу по российским, потому что у меня не должна быть жена и любовница, потому что, думаю, должен доверять и верить. Это уже серьезно. Я думаю, это серьезно. Вот что меня сделал запас моей головой. И они сейчас вам поставят песню про хоккей, которая в Канаде очень популярна. И я думаю, может, наш... Какой-то ковбой поет. Ковбой поет с гитарой, короче. Не знаю, что это, но это некая популярная канадская хоккейная песня, которую мы сейчас с вами и будем слушать. Будем надеяться, что действительно модная канадская песня про хоккей. Hello out there, we're on the air, it's hockey night tonight. Tension grows, the whistle blows, and the puck goes down the ice. The goalie jumps and the players bump, and the fans all go insane. Someone roars, Bobby scores. This guy drinks a lot of coffee. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. On this night, the greatest hockey players in the world are competing in front of 3,000 fans in a remote Muslim city 12 hours southeast of Moscow. The distance that once existed between hockey in Russia and hockey at home is long gone. The press have even taken to calling Akbars the Kazan Rangers, because like their New York cousins, they've overspent in an attempt to bring glory to their town. But on this night, Dinamo, the old KGB team, defeats the millionaires by a goal. No matter how much money is pumped into the Russian game, and no matter how much their league or their players start to look like ours, one truth about hockey remains. Dollars don't score goals, players do. It's about 6.30 in the morning, we landed in Omsk in Siberia. It's really, really freaking cold. Time for the double hat. And uh, the airport's closed. So we're going to stand here for about a half hour and wait. I'm taking the beautiful Siberian morning and wait for the doors to open. But here we are. The Omsk avant-garde are the reigning Russian Super League champions. Last year they beat Magneta Gorsk in the finals and the city has been celebrating ever since. From the high excitement inside the avant-garde rink to the busy frozen ponds of the city, hockey is everywhere in Omsk. On game day, 
The rink outside Father Denisi's church is packed with kids getting ready for their first tournament of the year. То есть перед игрой молимся после игры молимся. Я стараюсь делать замечания, когда начинают дети ругаться. Вот таким образом мы пытаемся через хоккей привести детей к церкви, к понятию о Боге и вообще подвигнуть их на добрые дела. The scene inside Father Denisi's church is like something out of the hockey sweater, evoking a time in Canada when men of the cloth were essential to sport in the community. On game day, Marina, owner of the World of Hair and voted the avant-garde superfan of the year, is preparing anxiously for the big game. Ну, конечно, я волнуюсь, надо очень хорошо выглядеть. И э, просто в таком платье очень, очень легко чувствовать себя королевой. On game day, the city's favorite sports bar is packed with kids singing and drinking in anticipation of the evening's tilt. The heartbeat of Russian hockey has changed so much over the years that the passion and electricity that I'd hoped to find at Moscow's Luzhniki Arena can now be found in the provinces, in places like the roaring avant-garde arena. Was she nervous? Yes, a little bit. For one night, this small city, once closed off from all Western visitors, was now the very epicenter of the hockey universe. Still reeling from their defeat a few nights earlier to Dinamo, Kazan hit for three quick goals. But a late goal by Yeremir Yager promises that the avant-garde guard are not done yet. The twists and turns of the game are written on the faces of the fans, and at times the tension appears to be too much. In the third period, Omsk roar back to tie the score before taking the lead. The lockout stars seem liberated by the size of the rink and by the Russian style of fire wagon hockey. It's a surreal feeling watching players with whom I'm so familiar skating in this strange town in a rink with a tenor to match any in Canada. I've just witnessed one of the greatest hockey games I'll ever see in my lifetime, in one of the world's great hockey towns. With their victory, the black and red faithful can go home rest assured that for one more night, their team and their city were at the top of the hockey world. After Omsk, my journey into Russian hockey feels almost complete. There's just one more thing I have to do. Number four. Number four. It's quite a burden. You know who number four was, don't you? Bobby Orr actually didn't play for Canada. Kuskin. Thirty-three years after first seeing them, I was now one of them, if only for one night. A 72 old timer skating in a dark rink in a distant mining town 14 hours outside of Omsk.
In Russia, as in Canada, hockey is a constant. No matter how much the players change, whether money fattens the system, or governments rise and fall and rise again, the one thing I realized as I skated with this group of men who'd once thrown fear into the hearts of Canadians is that hockey and hockey players are of one cold nation and that nothing can stop the game. Okay. 